name is Megan with SKT, and I'm out here at Mel Speed and Supply in Moline, Kansas. I'm with Stephanie. Thank you for letting us come out and take a little tour. So tell us a little bit about kind of the history of the business. I know you guys have been in business, your family has, for almost 40 years now. Yeah, for a long time. So uh, my dad and mom owned it in partnership with another couple, another local couple here. And uh, they built, a, they bought it, pardon me, bought the business in 1987 as an independently owned business then. Um, so we've been around here on this physical location for, uh, for a long time. Um, in 2004, my dad passed suddenly of a heart attack and I had just moved back from college at that time. So I stepped in and started running this store for my mom. Uh, my mom still currently is the owner of the store. I just work for her. We like to remind each other of that sometimes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I've been running the store since 2004. Uh, we built this new location and started building it in 2008. And in November of 2008, we had our grand opening in our current facility, which we're standing in now. So we went from about 150 square foot of retail space to this building is 6,000 square foot, half of which is retail space. So we drastically increased our retail space that we that we have to work with now, and including a much bigger and more uh, climate controlled warehouse, which we're standing in right now. So the back 3,000 square feet is one of our storage facility buildings. We keep a lot of our pet food, uh, companion animal, cattle feed. A lot of the bag product is in here. Um, so we've got the guys do a really great job of keeping everything clean and orderly in here. So um, this is where the majority of our customers will just pull back here and then they'll walk into the store from this way um, to then come to the counter and tell us what they need. So there's entrance on, on several different sides, but um, but this is kind of the bag storage space back here. So, so you also do some like fencing supply and things like mm -hmm. that. Yep, uh, outside in the yard we we keep a lot of uh, both T-posts and then like corner posts for building pipe fence. We also do bulk fertilizer uh, here with custom application. We have a large cattle business with bulk cattle feed being the, uh, a primary in our business. Um, we also carry lots of gates and bunks and hay feeders and um, of course we have like cattle tubs and mineral tubs and stuff on storage in other locations as well. But kind of just general, lots of farm and ranch, um, you know, water tanks and mineral feeders and, and sort of anything that you would need on your farm, you could pretty well, we, we have a pretty good a range of, of items, so. So how far out are your customers? Like, tell me a little bit about who you serve. We have really grown, um, grown our bulk feed business, which has then in turn helped grow a lot of our inside sales. So um, most of our bulk feed comes from Wichita, so outbound we're coming about 90 miles radius and then delivering from here, uh, we go 40, 50 miles sometimes and even a little bit further. So we touch, you know, from Wilson County to Montgomery County, Elk County, Chautauqua County, Cali County. Um, we have a pretty wide area, I would say, you know, that 40 to 50 mile radius anywhere around um, Greenwood County. Uh, we've, we've got a, a pretty pretty good customer base and that has allowed us to really increase our inside sales um, with growing our bulk feed business so so I'm sure this is really vital to all of the people the farmers that you serve but also adding that retail side is probably really convenient for people in the area tell me just a little bit about that and how important it is for the community and just the outlying areas as well well we really felt like uh, when we when we built the building, we wanted to be proactive and, and really establish ourselves as a, a long-standing business in the community. And with that said, you know, Moline is really important to us, but Elk County and, and the surrounding areas are too. And we wanted to be able to build something that, you know, my kids and my brother and sister's kids can really be proud of and want to come back and run as, you know, the, the third generation. So um, having those items that you would have to travel 30 or 40 miles for, be a little bit closer, and if you need, you know, a birthday card or a last minute wedding gift, or, uh, you know, you've gotten, your kid got invited to a birthday party and you need, you need something quick to go to it, we wanted to be able to service that, but still be a family owned and operated business. So 
in, in deciding what we were going to carry in this retail space versus our old, I mean, we really had a heyday because like I said, we went from nothing to just being overwhelmed with how much we could fill up. Right. And it was always a joke. People said, you're never going to fill this up when we built it. And we did have to spread stuff out a little bit more. And now I'm telling myself, why didn't you build a loft? Because okay. I, I don't have any more room. So um, we've picked up a lot of women's retail stuff. Uh, we have a pretty good selection of boots, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. We keep, um, you know, home products. We keep some food items now. We keep um, just just lots of different things so that you don't have to drive somewhere to get it. You can just come here while you're getting your dog food. You can, you know, pick up whatever whatever else it was that you're needing. So. And it's so great that the community can come in um, and the surrounding communities can support mm -hmm. local like that. Right. I mean, nowadays it's like it's so easy to find things online, but sure. it's great that they can come in and get it locally. Too. It, it is, and we really had tremendous community support and encouragement when we were deciding to do this. Um, uh, one of our, our banker at that time and, and his wife were some of my parents' best friends, and he really encouraged us to just go ahead and take the leap, do it. There's no better time to do it than now when you have you know, new blood transitioning and it was a pretty scary thing, but looking back now, it ultimately was one of the best decisions that we ever made. That's awesome. And I think you were telling me that, you know, if you don't carry something, yeah, you always pick it up. <laughs> yeah, typically um, we might not have it the first time that you come in, but if we if you were asked for it more than a couple of times, then I guarantee you the next time you check, it's probably going to be on the shelf. So we uh, we try really hard not to step on any other local businesses' toes and not carry too much of an inventory item or, or product selection that they would, mm -hmm. because we do realize how very vital businesses are to small towns, and in, you know every business that you close just dampens the town a little bit more so we want our other local businesses to thrive and we we work really hard to maintain good relationships with them um, and and like I said try not to carry too much of what they have but um, but yeah nine times out of ten if you ask for it and nobody else has it around town <laughs> we're gonna get it so yeah it's, it's been fun to shop so tell me a little bit about you know you guys have been in business for so long how the communication has changed and ordering and different things like that because I know you have the security with SKT and mm -hmm. internet phone and TV. Um, right. So just tell me a little bit about how you use those services. Right. We uh, made the decision to switch to SKT from um, a competitive, mm -hmm. a competitive mm -hmm. company uh, very early on. Back I think it was in 2004 we were having really unpredictable phone service with them. Mm -hmm. At that time that's basically all we had. We mm -hmm. had a single phone line. But, I mean, think, that was back in 2004, so things right. have changed a lot since right. then. Um, but yeah, we went from having a phone line and most everything was a, a contact ordering to then we did get the internet. It was still a dial-up internet when we first came in. But as technology started changing and companies started changing, we really saw the need to have a higher speed internet that allowed us um, ordering online and access to that. We do a lot of work via email. Our customers have changed to, you know, when we put our point of sale program in, um, it allowed you to enter a customer's email address so you could email a copy of the receipt. And a lot of the genre that we were dealing with didn't, first of all, have email addresses, mm -hmm. and they were 70 year old men that said, okay. Pardon my French, but why the hell would I want you to email something? Right. <laughs> Um, so now, I mean, it's it's totally changed. There are a lot of our customers who don't want to have to keep track of their paper. They want us to send it to their email. They stick it in a file, and at the end of the year, they can print everything out for their accountant and say, "Here you go. Here's all my expenses." So, um, and as far as you know, our point of sale system goes, we obviously had to require higher speed internet for that. Mm -hmm. So as as the years have progressed, we've definitely seen the need to keep increasing that that internet speed and um, you know my kids come to the store with me and my Bonnie our gal who works for us her kids come sometimes and um, it's kind of important like they my kids have been raised here since they were babies so they don't really mess with the inventory too much mm -hmm. but they still get bored so to have the TV in there to switch over and say just right. go watch TV for a while <laughs> it really works so we're totally satisfied with uh, with the service SKT provides us and Matt uh, had come over and helped us install our security system. 
and that was one of the best moves that we have ever made. I have mobile control of it on my phone, so wherever I am, I can pull it up at any time. Um, it, it's sad to think that you have to transition to that and move to that, but you know you have to remember that not everybody is honest and trustworthy yeah. in this world. So um, that in, in itself, I mean, it did save us on some insurance rates as a, as a business mm -hmm. to have a monitoring system like that in place it did reduce some of our insurance rates. Awesome. So, yeah, so we were super, super happy with that. Cool. Yeah. So you want to take us through some of the retail stuff and sure. give us the highlights? Absolutely. Absolutely. beautician and she'd always worked in somebody else's shop so seeing that opportunity and that we were all getting old enough to start having kids and she wanted to be a little bit more involved uh, we built her a beauty shop over here in the corner and the beauty shop shares these two restrooms too so in mapping out the locations of where we wanted stuff in here we really wanted a lot more of the women's retail focused items in this corner so that we could filtrate from her clientele mm -hmm. too so um, she does have her beauty shop in there, and then this is kind of where all the, uh, like I said, more female-focused items or family-focused items are, not just your everyday farm and ranch, um, mm -hmm. you know, cattle needs or horse needs. So nice to have the apparel here and yeah. have a party or something last minute when we can get something. Right, definitely. So we keep um, some locally made soaps. We keep some goat soaps that are um, that are really really good. With my mom being the beautician, she has access to several different retail products too, like the OPI nail mm -hmm. polish. So stuff that you wouldn't traditionally think that I'm gonna walk in the feed store and right. find, <laughs> you can buy a bottle of nail polish in here. Yeah. So we keep um, some home decor items. We keep a lot of jewelry items. We work a lot with West & Co. Um, jewelry Company and Crazy Train. They're really popular right now. That line of apparel, we keep a lot of Crazy Train stuff. And we also are a Wrangler dealer, so we keep kids' jeans um, and men's jeans, a couple of different styles of each. We also have started carrying little girl jeans, as a lot of our young 4-H families are having kids that are getting into the show side. We've seen a need for that to come. Um, so we do keep several different things like that. Lots of home decor stuff. At Christmas time, this is really stocked in full, but um, we keep men's shirts. We also handle Wyoming trainer vests for men. So lots of lots of different stuff. And um, we do have logo to, logo to apparel that a local gal makes for us that we have available in here for purchase too, from t-shirts to sweatshirts and hats. Um, so we've got lots of different stuff like that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we do carry um, Twisted X is our main brand of shoes, but we also keep Georgia and Rocky men's boots. So this is our men's work and casual side. We don't carry too many of the men's Twisted X dress boots just because everybody likes to have something different, but we certainly order them a lot for people mm -hmm. and we do have plenty of stuff that you can try on for size. So we really have a great selection. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. So then we go into more of the women's and kids. Uh, we've got a lot of kids that come in here, especially back to school time, fair time, Christmas time. So you've got kids casuals and kids western, and again, like the men, we don't really carry too many of the women's dress western boot. Most of what we sell are casuals there, but Twisted X is a great company to deal with, and they always have new stuff coming out, and really on the fashion forward side of things, along with still being a traditional casual western shoe. Mm -hmm. So we keep a little bit of both. Um, so that's been a really good move for us. We've, we've been really happy with the relationship with Twisted X. So we also keep uh, some mud boots for the whole family. We've got like rain boots for kids and uh, mud boots for kids, women, and men. Obviously we're starting to get in a little bit more to the feed side versus the retail side. Uh, so we do have Anything from, as you can see, a primate diet to <laughs> rabbits to dogs and cats to horse to deer. Obviously in Southeast Kansas, this deer, uh, deer feeding business has really boomed in the last several years. 
So we've got a lot of return customers that we see on that. Um, some outfitters that we work with and then as well as just guys who have leased land up here and come hunt forever for, mm -hmm. for years and we've it's a really fun time once deer season gets started because we really get to see you know they've been coming in here now for 10 or 12 years so you build a relationship with those right. customers and it's it's almost like they get to come home when, mm -hmm. when they get to come in and visit with you and you get to catch up with what their family's been doing the last year so it's just really as we've increased our product base we've really increased our network with people and mm -hmm. it's just really been fun to develop those relationships as well so um, so we're moving into more of like the kids focused items again we try to keep those little last minute birthday gifts and we've got uh, big country toys we work a lot with them um, we try to keep some books too as our kids have gotten older and you realize that it's important for them to actually be doing something other than just playing with a toy. Right. We, we typically have a pretty large selection of books. We're waiting on a new shipment right now. So we also keep the infant twisted X. So, and then little baby infant boots. I mean, I know when we got these in, I really wanted a pair for myself. Yeah, but. right. <laughs> Why don't these come in my size? Exactly, exactly. So uh, pocket knives, we keep a lot of more maker and uh, boker and case pocket knives for the gifts you know for men we have a pretty large selection of gloves um, lawn and garden uh, insecticides chemical small pack chemical um, some small hardware things uh, or true values sort of stuff but um, food items as i said we really like to work with uh, over here we like to try to stay as local as we can with that so through our vendors, we work with a great jelly and jam company out of Arkansas. Uh, we keep Jam's Pickles, which are based out of Oklahoma. We have been selling head country barbecue sauces and seasonings for several years, um, based out of Ponca City. So it's just really important for us to stay as regional as mm -hmm. we can with, with a lot of our products. We do also do some consignment-based stuff with people. If, if somebody local has made something mm -hmm. and wants to sell it, then we work out a deal with them and we'll be a store space for them to come in and try to sell their product so right. so it's it's been fun to work on that side of it too it's great to have all of that local stuff and I mean it's things that you're not going to find anywhere else right so. right it's, it's it's pretty important for us to to try to, to stay small like that and so as we move over onto this side this is more of our traditional feed store side um, we keep a lot of horse products fly products um, this is our animal health corner. We keep any, you know, your your ear tags for your cattle, your hot shots and batteries, um, darts for dart rifles, um, just you know, warmer anything, anything that you would find in the in the feed store we would have here. So something that's really grown for us in the last couple of years as our kids have gotten older and more involved in 4-H and showing is the show side. So. Uh, we keep a full line of Purina Honor Show Chow Show supplements as well as show feed for any species. Um, and then of course all the grooming products that would be associated with that. So anything a kid would need from the beginning of their project uh, through the, the premium sale or state fair or however far they choose mm -hmm. to take it, we've got all of their grooming pot products and, and feed items too. So 4-H is something that is, is really, really important to us as a business and us as a family. Um, we grew up very involved in the 4-H. My dad volunteered numerous, numerous hours with the uh, premium sale committee and with the local 4-H clubs, and he loved, he would never tell anybody no who asked for money if you were a 4-H or FFA kid and walked in with a big smile. So that's been a really important thing for us to carry on. Um, I'm really involved in our local 4-H club as my kids are members. And then on the county level, we love to support any, any 4-H or FFA program we can help out with. So that's definitely something that we like to, uh, to help and to try to keep the cost as low as possible so that these kids can actually learn the, you know, the project that they want to buy from buying their animal to feeding their animal properly, but still economically mm -hmm. to then you know, buying your, your show supplies intact at a, a place where you can still make a profit. Yeah. which is really what we're what we're all trying to do mm -hmm. so we like to foster and work with that program as much as we can 
That's awesome. It really helps you build relationships too with all the families. It does. And stuff, so. It's fun to see the charge account set up for the grandpa mm -hmm. and then for the dad and then for these kids to come in and say, I just bought my first 4 H pig. I need your help. Mm -hmm. what, what can we do? So it's been a really fun process to, to watch. And, you know, as we get older, the, the kids that I remember being in 4 H with are now parents mm -hmm. and raising their kids in the same program. So it's, it's just been a really fun thing for us to help out with. Yeah. So um, after we kind of get out of here, we go into more of the coffee area. Uh, it was really important for us in moving from the old building. We were kind of a gathering place other than the card parlor or the gas station where you go to have morning coffee. You would filter from the gas station down to the feed store and everybody would just sit around and feel comfortable. And we had an old warm morning stove in the old feed store and people just got in their chairs and read the paper and visited around that. So we knew that was something that in moving to the new facility, we wanted to keep a, a feeling of togetherness yeah. where people could just come and sit down with their dirty feet and spill their coffee <laughs> on the floor and, right. and shoot, the, shoot the crap. So, <laughs> um, so we put a, a fireplace in and then some of the, well, I guess, there's still one old chair from the building and the, re the rest of them have kind of been a mod podge of stuff. But at any given time, there's, a, there's an area full of men and women uh, just drinking coffee or drinking pop in the afternoon. And most of the time we've baked a tray of brownies or something and it's out there and they're enjoying that. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we just really wanted, you know, especially the men when we transitioned over from our old facility, which was super, super old and dingy mm -hmm. and, uh, we wanted them to feel comfortable and be able to think that they were still in the feed store and it wasn't like they were walking into Walmart. Right. You know? mm -hmm. So we've been able to maintain that really well and we love, uh, most of the time, we love a room full of them giving each other a hard time. Every every now and then, they get a little out of hand. A little rowdy. But, <laughs> yeah. But they keep it fun and, yeah. and lively, so... It's nice, I think, for the area to have a place where they can come, like that sense of community, and we right. can all hang out, and everybody knows each other. And right. All that kind of stuff there too, is so. a, a great sense of camaraderie, and, and a lot of times, especially when our kids were little, uh, one of my favorite customers, who's, bless his heart, is not with us here anymore, but he would come in and get a cup of coffee, and he'd say, Paul, what can I get for you today? And he'd say not a damn thing. I just wanted to stop by and see the boys. <laughs> so, you know, it was just, you know, for people to feel like that, that they could right. just come in to sit and visit and not necessarily have to buy anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we just really wanted to, to foster that and grow that. So, so I think we've, we've hit our goal as far as making a comfortable place for, for the coffee drinkers to come to. We still have that. So, awesome. yeah. So I know really quick you are involved with the chamber, right? And yes, you've got a big event coming up this weekend. So just tell us a little bit about that because I know we're going to be there for the parade and stuff yes. too. So. Awesome. We're excited to have you guys. And uh, we love having a relationship as a Chamber of Commerce with SKT. They help us in so many ways. You have representation at every one of our chamber meetings. Um, and as well as Lonnie has been a big help in finding some um, like some grant stuff for mm -hmm. us. So we, we love the relationship the Chamber has with SKT. Yeah. Um, I am President of Chamber and this weekend is our big Crazy Days event. It's an annual event that's happened in Moline for as long as I can remember. Um, our Grand Marshal's family has made it to town and our Grand Marshal will make it to town on Thursday. So we're really excited to, the, to have them here. Um, the festivities kick off on Friday with a free bean feed in the park at 6 p.m., followed by the benefit auction. Um, the money that's collected at that auction gets split up between the Schaefer House Museum, which is the local museum here in town that the ladies work really hard to maintain and upkeep. It also gets a percentage of it goes to our Moline Public Library, and they've done some really great things, both with the addition there and a lot of exciting programs they have going on. And then the rest of it gets put back into the, the Chamber of Commerce budget for what we, the projects that we decide to do during the year. So we've got some really exciting projects coming up in the next uh, next couple of years. Um, we had a really big one last year with the, the bridge that we built on the south side of the park. So uh, we didn't really tackle a huge project yeah. this year because we kind of had to save up. But, right. um, but yeah, so the activities start Friday night, bean feed at six, uh, followed by the benefit auction. 
and then they carry on into Saturday morning with our parade at 1030. This year's theme for um, for the whole weekend is a circus theme, kind of an under the big top. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to be in our parade, we would welcome you. We do give away cash prizes for the top placers. Nice. So yeah, if you've got a kid that wants to ride a bike or a, a group that wants to, to make a, a float, yeah. you're welcome to come over. So the parade's at 1030 on Saturday. And then uh, directly following that down in the city park, our activities start with our annual turtle race that kicks off at noon. It's a super it's competitive fun. turtle race between those little kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fun to watch. So um, no water turtles or snapping turtles. We have to make sure and say that. <laughs> Only box turtles. But uh, So our kids' games start then, and then they continue the entire afternoon. The Howard City Pool kids man a couple of big water slides that we have um, that we have rented. And so I think you can get an armband for like five bucks and your kids can do the water slides all afternoon. Uh, we have lots of different kids games from, um, let's see, we've got water balloon toss to egg toss to hula hoop races to just uh, any, any sort of thing that you can do. Kids can win prizes or money on that stuff. Um, so there's activities all afternoon. The West Elk Senior Class does have a hamburger, hot dog, and homemade pie dinner that they do down in the park that day. Starts at 11 and they serve until about 1.30. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then after that afternoon activities, well, I guess this year too, with the help of the Mullion Public Library, we have a juggler that's coming in oh, to do fun. a presentation at 4 o'clock. And then uh, the evening activities start with the Hog roast supper is at 6.30, I believe. Um, so we have whole hog that we smoke and baked beans, coleslaw, potato salad. Um, that that me is a meal that does cost. It's not a free meal, but we would love for you to join us there. And then the chamber does sponsor a big fireworks show at dusk on Saturday evening to sort of wrap up the whole weekend. So bring your kids and families or whoever you want in your lawn chair and uh, come down and stay the whole day with us in the park on Saturday. Seems it's like a great community event. It is. It's a great weekend. We've got a lot of people who come up, travel from other states, and just come every year for this. And it's just a really good sense of home and family at, at the at the park. So we would invite y'all to come. Awesome. Yeah. So if anybody wants to find out more about Mills Feed and Supply, where do they go? We do have a Facebook page. We do not currently have a website. We're um, talking about working on that but you can contact us through Facebook and we do respond quickly Bonnie is great at that we ship anywhere so if you have something that you want to purchase just let us know we can ship you can call our number at 620-647-3294 um, or yeah visit that Facebook page or just stop in and see us in person if you you know we better <laughs> always got the coffee pot on or get you a bottle of water or a can of pop and just sit down and have a visit. Yeah, so. Come out to the Moline Crazy Days this weekend and check it out and then stop in the store too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We look forward to having you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you letting thank us come you. out and do the little tour. It's awesome to learn more about the business. Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right.